goodness. Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte, and we are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our next guest has been a busy dude, man. He starred in a bunch of TV and film projects, but now, this fall, he finds himself with two amazing shows coming to television. You'll be able to catch him in the fourth season of Supergirl on the CW as Manchester Black, and you'll see him navigate the uncharted, murky depths of the galaxy in Night Flyers on Sci-Fi as Captain Roy Ayers. I'm excited to chat with this man. Ladies and gentlemen, the great David Ajala is in the building. How do we feel about David, huh? He's an objectively handsome dude. I'm very excited he's here. We'll bring him out in just a second. But uh, before we do, I believe we have a quick peek at the trailer for Night Flyers. Let's go ahead and run that clip. This is a warning, not a distress call. Do not board this ship. Do not bring the Night Flyer back to Earth. Night Flyers is a haunted house story on a starship. It's psycho in space. And to space we go. Night Flyers is like nothing you've seen before. It's exciting stuff. I can't wait to actually see it come alive on the screen. This was an extremely ambitious set to build. It's acres of spaceship. It would be epic. If I were to describe this series in three words, it would be just fucking awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, make a ridiculous amount of noise. David Ajala, right here. There he is. Very kind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. Matt, good to see you, dude. So good to see you, you David. too. Thank you. Digging so the kicks. Likewise. This whole look that you got going right now is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you so much for carving out time. I know it's a very busy time of the year right now. I know you got a lot going on later today. Uh, how are you doing, man? How's life going right now? I'm good. Look, yeah. the weather's good. Yeah. Um, hello, people. Everyone in the house, big up yourselves. Good to see you all, looking good. Um, uh, yeah, it's a good day for it. That's awesome, man. Uh, congratulations. I was saying this backstage, I'll say it again. You've got two awesome projects that are coming out, uh, very close proximity. This one in particular, I got to watch a little bit of, so I'm excited to dive into that. Uh, you're going to Comic-Con a little bit later tonight, is yeah, that right? Yeah, uh, a few hours. A few hours. Literally. That's right, it is, it's tonight. Yes, today, yeah, tonight. Oh my goodness, that's exciting. And they're going to premiere the first episode in front of, like, I think 3,000 people. My so we're all going to watch it at the same time. I haven't seen it yet. So this will be your first time, and you're going to watch it with a, a packed house. Yeah. Man, is there no better? First of all, that <laughs> sounds like the best way to do it. It yeah. also sounds like the scariest way to do it. Oh, completely, <laughs> completely. But, you know, funny enough, I wouldn't have it any other way because yeah. there's something really special about having, you know, strangers watching it for the first time, and you're watching it with them and experiencing it together. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I imagine the energy in the room is going to be pretty, pretty special, man. Yeah, uh, I'm, I I'm excited that. for you. Uh, well, let's let's get into this this whole show, man. How did you? First of all, were you familiar at all with the George R. R. Martin novella? Because I was not. I, I I was unaware of it. I, I was completely unaware. Yeah. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know, George R. R. Martin is the brainchild behind Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um. I, when, when I initially spoke with the producers of Night Flyers, they recommended that I read the novella. So I had a day off from filming, I was working on something else, and I, like, I binged this um, book in like a day. Yeah. I just blazed through it. Um, over 100 pages, just, just blazed through it. And what I really enjoyed about it was just um, how detailed and descriptive this world was. Yeah. This, this ship, the characters, being in outer space. Um, so immediately after reading that and then speaking with the producers and then they sent me the script, I thought, you know what, this looks like fun. I want to do it because I've kind of not purposefully stayed away from science fiction, but just in terms of the work that I've done, it hasn't really been in the avenue of science fiction. I mean, the last science fiction thing I worked on was Jupiter Ascending with the Wachowskis. So um, this time around, I thought, you know what, here we go. I'm definitely happy to delve back in 
and here we have it, Night oh, Flyers. Is, yeah, you are smack dab in the heart of science fiction. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, and, you know, that's funny. George, uh, George's work, like I'm buddies with him or something, but the great George R.R. R. Martin, you know, he's known uh, for creating the, these dense, detailed worlds. I mean, of course, Game of Thrones is a prime example of just how much uh, world building he does and how comfortable he is and how strong that tool set is uh, there. I saw a post on your on your Insta. It was just the screen cap. It was from back in September. It was just a screen cap of Game of Thrones, and it said, believe the hype. Was that <laughs> because you were here and people were like, you got to watch it or was it just coincidental that you were just finally getting to the show had you not watched it yet um i mean truth be told it took me a while to watch game of thrones because yeah. i've been you know very grateful just been working on different tv and film oh. projects so i just really haven't had time to, to binge it properly so to watch the entire seven seasons of game of thrones oh. it took me about just over a year to watch it just on and off commit into it but i recently just finished season seven it's amazing it is. <laughs> it's so good. I think like so so good. People tend. It's one of those shows that if people haven't been watching it, they go, "You haven't watched it." But I feel like in your line of work, you get a bit of a pass because you're busy creating all the content that we're watching. Right. Right. So I'll happily you, take that. Yeah. If something has, <laughs> has has slipped under the radar, it's not as big of an offense. But I was amused by that. I was like, "He's just getting around to watch it." I, I had know. to remind myself that. I you, know. <laughs> no, a lot of people message me. They're like, "David, really? Yeah. If you only exactly. just watch Game of Thrones?" Yeah, that awesome was, show. That was the funny part for me. That my immediate thought was the word "really" with a question mark. I know, and you know, funny enough, I'm with with um watching Game of Thrones now that I'm fully you know up to date with the entire seven seasons. Yeah, it, it's so interesting watching a show like that, which is so different from Night Flyers, yeah. but then so similar in terms of plot twists and character executions and um blood. Oh yeah, well that's just it, right? So I, here I am. I'm someone as someone. My job to watch all, all of these things. So I've seen Game of Thrones. I know I, I haven't read uh, any of George R.R. R. Martin's uh, books. Uh, admittedly, I've watched the shows, but I know that language, right? So coming into this, they, they put his name right there on the poster. So I know that. I've been taught that when I watch this. A and you're looking for those certain things, and you're like, all right, who should I not fall in love with? Because he's inevitably <laughs> going to kill this person right away. Yeah, right. Uh, and within the first episode, there are so many twists that even with me looking for them, I didn't see coming and like fun stuff happening. Uh, uh, even inside of the first, I've seen the first 20 minutes. Yeah. Look what happens in the first 10 minutes. Exactly. Yeah, well, there, there you go. Exactly. So it, it's a hell of a ride. When when you got, okay, so you get the novella, you read that, you you talk to the producers, then they hand you the script. Yeah. Uh, what's your, I'm really curious about like your, your process in terms of preparation. One, you're really delving into sci-fi. Two, I know early in your career you were with the, the Royal Shakespeare Company, you were on stage. Right. Yeah. So I'm curious long term how that experience kind of I informed your process once you, you got into a film and TV? Well, um, That's a lot of questions. No, no, so one. first and <laughs> foremost, you know what's really interesting about Night Fly is my character is a hologram. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to, I was going through my phone book to see if any of my friends know a hologram, if they secretly are a hologram. So I didn't really have many yeah. <laughs> references. Point of reference. Yeah. You know, but um, ultimately what, what I found really interesting with the character that I play, I play Captain Roy Eris. He is the, um, the captain of the ship. Um, and what, what I try to just hone in on is why has this guy become a captain and why is this mission so important? And this mission is very important because they're actually about to leave um, Earth to fly to outer space to make contact with this celestial alien being yeah. in the hope that they'll be able to glean some intelligence that will save humanity. Yeah. And he's part of that journey. The reason why this journey is so important for Captain Roy Eris is because he wants to do something on a global level that will allow him to step outside of his mother's shadows. His um, mother's celebrity has overshadowed the achievements which he has made. So here he is now, a boy becoming a man, literally. I suppose the work that I've done, be it with the Royal Shakespeare Company, um, in drama school, there's always been a strong emphasis, emphasis sorry, in terms of character and understanding, of stripping away very complicated theories and ideas and just simplifying them. Fair enough, we're in space, <laughs> outer space, yeah. you know, there's, I mean, this is said in the year 2093. 23, 2093, it's You know, yeah. so you have to draw on things which are really rooted in reality to make this work. Yeah. What's exciting about this show is though we may be in outer space, 
it's grounded in reality and you're going to be rooting for and also vying against every one of these characters at one stage or another. Yeah. No, the show does handle that very well. Cause, I mean, and it has to. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Sci-fi, for me, doesn't work unless they can ground it somewhat in reality, even yeah. when we're in 2093. Completely. Yeah, and there was one little story detail that, uh, such a small thing, but the idea that we were, as a species, this advanced, capable of this machinery, but still hadn't made contact. Yeah. And that, like, that yeah, kind of right? hammered something home, too. I never see, because 99% of the time you see something like this, it's, it's presumed aliens are known to exist, and we've talk to them and we have a sure. cantina and whatnot on this. <laughs> but like in this particular scenario, I was like, oh damn, it's 2093, we have all this stuff, but we still haven't talked to anybody else. Right. That little detail alone, I was like, made it more real for me. And then no, completely. Th the way you guys are, are, are carrying these characters and all the stuff that everyone's going through, uh, it, it's, it's really well done. Um, especially the relationships between everybody. Talk to me about uh, as a hologram. You're not a hologram when the cameras are off. You're very much here right now. That's right. So, uh, what kind think, of relationship? <laughs> you think? Uh, what kind of uh, bonding? What, what was going on behind the scenes? I'm always, especially with something dark and creepy and scary like this, you usually get the best stories because the idea is everybody tries to keep the mood light between yeah. the takes. Yeah. And do you know what's interesting is I, I'm like I consider myself to be an easygoing, you know, laid back guy. But it just so happens, the roles which I've been doing recently, I'm playing characters that are going through life-changing events. Yeah. You know, the stakes are always through the roof. And I'm just easy. I mean, the biggest stakes for me is in the morning figuring out if I'm going to have oatmeal for breakfast or if I'm going to have a smoothie, you know? <laughs> Those are my stakes. So now in, in this world, we, we, we cover some very dark territory. Yeah. And we ask some really, really big... Um, human questions but on the flip side of that like you said when the camera's not rolling we're always cracking jokes yeah. and you know just um bantering each other it's fun and i have to say this cast and ensemble of actors have been an absolute joy to work with awesome. and so fun so fun to work yeah. with because i mean look we're in outer space you know it, it's yeah well you're isolated it's, yeah it, these are the people this is it you have to have a certain um uh certain um lightness yeah. with this kind of work with this kind of content for sure what um have you guys I, i'm doing my research for this i don't know if you guys were you must have been aware of it the 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 film version of this story i've only seen the trailer have you seen the trailer or anything you, you've seen more than me i haven't seen oh anything. you guys all right <laughs> you gotta look it up this is your homework internet uh is google the, the trailer for for night flyers it came out in 1987 uh, and I, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying it. It's just one of those movies that it looks like it's a lot of fun to watch. Like it's definitely, <laughs> a, definitely a slightly different tone uh, right. than, than what you guys Completely are going for. Different. So get the cast together if you can. And if check I it can, out. Yeah. Have, ha I, do you know, probably after I've seen all 10 episodes, I may just check it out. Yeah. Because we, we weren't really encouraged to work, watch the film and I'm happy I haven't watched the film. So as I'm, you know, on set and venturing into this world, I have nothing to compare it to. I, it, I mean, it's absolutely They both take place in space. I'll give them that. But it looks like a very different project. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you smooth, oh, you smooth. You smooth. You got to check it out, man. You got to check it out. I will. I will. Um, you, speaking of all the things that I loved about this show, we mentioned this briefly back there. It looks incredible. Uh, it's shot beautifully. The state, the, the sets are, are, are ridiculous. Mm. How much of how much of the sets were practical versus digital? Because I couldn't tell. I sometimes like obviously. You don't have a spaceship. That's digital. Right. But like when you guys were on you the sure deck and whatnot, well, I don't know. I'm not sure about anything anymore. <laughs> but when you guys were on the deck mm -hmm. and all the control interface and all this stuff, I'm curious how many uh, practical sets and effects were used. So, uh, like, um, believe it or not, uh, what you see when you do get to check it out, 90% uh, of everything you see is real. Oh, like, they've done awesome. yeah, you can an feel incredible it. job. I remember the first day stepping on set and like being walked through all the different sets. I got lost twice that day, by the way, because these sets are huge. Wow. They're massive, they're, they're, they're ridiculous. And we've built these things to scale. So when we are in central command, which is where Captain Eris usually operates when he's commanding his team, it, it's, it's built to scale, it's built to size. When you're walking around, when, when you touch things, and, and especially because we're dealing with a lot of technology, and it's our interpretation of where we would be in 2093 and how technology has advanced. And you're interacting with things that are super cool. 
So we're in this show, you're also getting a glimpse into how things could be, certainly technology-wise, later on down the line. Yeah, it's, it, I'm so happy to hear that because you can feel, uh, it has a same too, it kind of has like almost like an alien vibe. Yeah. Of just like, you know, that, that crew on the haunted ship sort of thing. Like it's very much in that family uh, of, of scare and horror. And yeah. it's really fun to watch. I'm excited for it to come out. Uh, it, uh, I couldn't find, I didn't see, I looked high and low. I know <laughs> this fall, do we have a precise date? Are we going to find that out very soon? We're going to find out very soon, but I can tell you it will premiere on the Sci-Fi Channel, December 2nd. Yes. Oh, fantastic. And it's going to be announced, time and everything, officially in like literally two hours when we go to comics. That's what I figured. That's why I, could, I was like, they're probably doing it tomorrow night. All right, cool. So you got to keep your eyes out. And then I saw also not only on Sci-Fi, but around the world, it's going to be on Netflix in the UK right. and Ireland, I think, is what I saw. Uh, yeah, like in, the new year, in the new year. Um, it's going to be on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, around the world. I'm not Something, sure yeah. in terms of when it'll be yeah. available for... Um, uh, people in America, got it. Netflix. I'm not sure about that. So but hopefully it'll be, it'll be soon. Got it. So sci-fi here this sci-fi fall, here, this and fall. then Netflix around the world yeah. soon. Yeah. Uh, before we go to audience uh, Q and A, I mentioned at the top of the show you got two amazing projects. Uh, I, I'd be remiss not to bring up Supergirl season right. four. Congratulations, thank you, Manchester thank you. Black. That's a huge deal. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And keep me honest here, just like this is your first sort of sci-fi thing. Is this your? Uh, I believe it's your first role with like legit super abilities right like superpowers sort of or yes no yeah. it is I, I had to think about that it, it yeah. really really is and the thing is um i mean you know in the world of acting there's you'll get all kinds of different scripts at different stages in your life yeah. and i've had a few you know scripts that i've read for dc projects and marvel projects but then this kind of came my way yeah. and this was like i i had just finished doing night flyers for five months we wrapped in june and I was hoping to take like from June until the rest of the year off just to have a bit of respite, read books, go see plays, do cooking, swim, just simple stuff. But then um, uh, Warner Brothers contacted my team and they said, look, we've got this really cool role. It's the role of Manchester Black, a very iconic character yeah. in the DC world. And we just wanted to speak with David about it to see if he was interested. I'm like, well, Warner Brothers calling me? <laughs> I'm like, I'll, I'll come out of semi-retirement for that, you know? So... Um, I spoke with them, they pitched this amazing idea, and um, like I literally flew in from Vancouver a few days ago. Yeah. We're still filming it right now, and we just wrapped on um, a couple of the episodes back to back, and um, so man, Super Golf fans are in for a treat. Yeah, they're in for a very, very big treat. Super, uh, super excited about the, the the new season of Supergirl and that this character's coming. And I saw too. This isn't a spoiler, of course. With Manchester Black comes the Elite and, and all these different things. And it's just it, it's fun to think of how that character's going to impact this Supergirl's world and oh, what that's going to be in like. In a yeah. very big way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, all right. Well, in the interest of avoiding spoilers, I won't ask any more about that. Let's <laughs> Thank go. <you>. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, congratulations Thanks. on both of these things. We've got some questions in the room, so we're going to turn it over. I see a microphone right here. We'll cool. start. Hey. hey, hey, David, how you doing, man? I'm good, thank hey. you. Hey, um, two um, questions in two parts. Um, my, one of my mates told me you're from Hackney. I am. Yeah. Okay. Hackney, so, yeah. East London. Yeah, man. So, um, question I have: What was it like filming Fast and the Furious Six? Because I know they had a location in Hackney. Yeah. So what was it like filming on your home turf? Oh, that was and amazing. The, and the second question: You mentioned Supergirl. I know that um, your namesake, David Hay- Haywoods, yeah, is in that as well. Yeah. Did he give you any advice in terms of um, working this side of the pond? Okay, so we'll hit the first question. Um, Fast and Furious 6 was an amazing gig to work on. Um, Prior to getting the movie, I hadn't watched any Fast and Furious movies. Um, But of course, when I did get the movie, I started to watch them and I thought this is super cool, especially Fast and Furious 5, I thought, amazing. Uh, I'll never forget the day that we were filming in Hackney because I was still living in Hackney at the time and literally I got picked up by my driver, and it was like a 15 minute drive to set. It was amazing, and here we are, I kid you not, like Dwayne Johnson, Vin Diesel, uh, Rochelle Rodriguez, God bless Paul Walker, um, Sung Kang, Tyrese Gibson, Ludacris, here we are in my neck of the woods, in my gaff in Hackney, and we're shooting this film, like amazing. It, it was such a wonderful experience, you know. Surreal. Completely surreal. Like I'm thinking, what's, what's Dwayne Johnson doing in Hackney, you know? 
to buy sandwiches over there. Now Dwayne Johnson. Uh, literally, <laughs> you know, that's I, I would wait for the bus stop right yeah. over there. I would wait for the bus at that bus stop right there. Yeah. And now Dwayne Johnson was just in the car that's past that very bus stop to come to set. Um, second question, David Harewood. I actually worked with David Harewood a few years ago on a TV series. David Harewood is a very wonderful, wonderful actor who's in Supergirl. And I remember when I got confirmed for the role, I messaged him straight away. And he was like, David, oh, great, great, congratulations. I'm um, welcome aboard. I'm mean, gonna have a lot of fun. He said, um, I have to pre-warn you, when we get into the month of October and beyond, the atmosphere on set changes. Because we film in Vancouver and there's a lot of rain. So people get slightly depressed. So <laughs> don't take it personal if people are a bit, you know, short with you. I said, dude, that's, that's fine, I can work with that. Uh, funny enough, I just did a couple scenes with David Harewood at the end of um, one of the episodes which we just shot. And um, like again, like his character, where his character goes and where my character goes is very, very cool. It's going to be a great season. Uh, I also, so. uh, I, if we could avoid people with ridiculously sexy voices, the two of you talking together <laughs> is a stark contrast that. to my nasal American <laughs> voice. I'll, I'll happily say that. Catch a high five. Yeah, right, you, boom. Both of you guys. So next person with a microphone, for the love of God, help me. Oh, okay, come on down. I've heard your voice before. Yeah, I don't. I don't have to. No, you have a lovely voice oh, as well. Good. You. No have, pressure. Go. <laughs> um, I was wondering, hypothetically speaking. If um, Night Flyers was like a real world, um, would you go there and would you be your character or take someone else's? Wow, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, great question. W would I go on the ship? Yes, that, that could be cool. I would happily go on the ship for 10 minutes and then hop straight back out. I like my house. I, li I like my life, you know? <laughs> I'm not good with being claustrophobic and what have you, but for the thrill of it, I would love to experience it and to play around with the technology. But aside from that, I'm happy to just stay in Hackney. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for your question and your awesome voices. Uh, you, so you just, you just want to get in there and just poke around a bit and just see all the buttons and whistle, bells and whistles. Oh, I get told off for doing it constantly. Yeah. I was like, what's this? Like, David, don't touch that. Why? It costs 20 grand. Oh, right. <laughs> Let me, let me not touch that. My bad, my bad. Um, well, uh, I can't say it enough. Both of these shows, uh, so amazing that you got them both coming out. And, and congratulations to you, man. Thank and, you. And nothing Thank you. but the best. I'm excited to see the, the season four. I can't wait to see the rest of this show uh, as well. And so, especially for, I was going to say, for science fiction fans and horror fans, there will be a lot of Easter eggs in this TV series. There, there are so many really, really cool ones. So You, you can tell it's yeah, made. You'll, you'll see. It's made with a love and passion for the genre, for sure. Yeah, uh, it for bleeds sure. through every, every, every frame. Uh, all right, I'll remind everybody one last time, Nightflyer Sci-Fi this fall, Netflix later, and Supergirl is back October 14th uh, at 8 p.m. on the CW. Ladies and gentlemen, you'd be rude not to make a ridiculous amount of noise for this incredible man. Join me in thanking David Ajala. Come on. Thank you. So Thank awesome. You.